Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show Lady Boss knows what women want. To be free to speak their voice. To live in financial freedom and build businesses that radiate wealth, leaving legacies we can be proud of. Every Friday, we bring you Lady Boss entrepreneurs that are changing the world. Diane Solano, the energy entrepreneur. Dana Terrio, handle the lump, heal your life. And Joan Sharp, changing the conversation from money to vision. See you Friday. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode with Diane Solano, the energy entrepreneur. Today, we're going to be talking about there are multiple elements required to achieve financial freedom, from which include both income generation and investing. And in today's discussion, we're going to dive right into it. Welcome to the show, Diane Solano. Hello, Cornelia, and I'm excited to be here again. Another Friday, another month, but really excited and empowered. Oh, my gosh. First of all, I just I have to say this before we get started, because I know you've got you're going to introduce us to a super awesome special guest today where we're going to really dive deep into the conversation. But first, Diane, I have to tell you and I have to tell the audience how absolutely extraordinary you are. The energy entrepreneur, Diane Solano. Really, truly, you know, we've known each other now since, I want to say it's since October of last year, and we're both involved with each other's program, right? And we're both supporting each other, and it's just, uh, it's just brilliant to watch uh, and witness and be in your leadership as I'm seeing you lead on a global scale. And I'm so inspired by how you lead and how you show up and how you handle uh, the the way to the way to influence in direct sales and how you handle your team and what's been happening and I just I just want to give you this kudos and tell you you know you truly are a woman that walks your talk and that's why it's like I'm on your team for certain and I'm so glad to be a part of it because we've been definitely been doing some magic behind the scenes and we're getting ready to open a country. I mean, who would have ever thought that, right? Like how that, that wasn't planned. We didn't set out to, we're gonna open Liberia, uh, but that's what is, is happening. And it really truly happened when women come together and when they have a vision and then they, you know, they stand strong in their vision and they utilize their, their skills and their strategy and they stay true to their message. And that's what you do. I'm just like, I am so in adoration of you. So, Diane Solano, what can I say? Cornelia, you are making me blush. <laughs> I'm just grateful that we attracted each other because we are a vibrational match. We know that what comes into our lives is because it's an extension of who we are. So I just wanted something different for my life. And now that I was able to get there, I want something different for other women and men and children and whoever's hungry for something that's really deep in their hearts that they, we have vehicles to help them get there. And that's going to segue beautifully into today's conversation. So how perfect Go for is that? It. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. You have, you have a guest that you're going to introduce us to now. I am. And you know what? Thank you, Cornelia, for your beautiful words. And again, we are an extension of who we are. I actually met our next guest at one of our live events that we do every week here in the city of Toronto prior to the pandemic, of course, you know, we were doing an opportunity meeting. I'm very connected in the health and wellness field, as you know, and through someone who knew someone, I met this wonderfully powered woman who walked in the room and had this knowing, but this softness and this strength all at the same time, the beautiful duality. She is also an energy entrepreneur because, you know, most of us have to go through changes and struggle to get to where we are. She started off as an employee like all of us and decided to step into her power, become an entrepreneur as well. So originally from the banking industry, our guest today, Lady Limor Markham, actually teaches uh, real estate. Uh, she's a real estate investor. She's a money expert. She actually helps other people who are wanting to generate more health, becoming more of that you economy and yeah, exactly. You know, I've had that personal conversation with her saying, hey, I'm out of survival now. How can I step further into my creation? So Lemur is going to share very powerfully with us today about what you can do now 
especially in the last two months. You know, a lot of people's worlds got flipped upside down. She's been featured on, let's see, uh, BNN, so that's a business uh, news network, Global TV, CTV, Huffington Post, National Post, Globe and Mail. She's an employee, like I said, turned entrepreneur, self-made, independent female, fabulous, and always shining. So I'm going to welcome Lee Moore to our conversation today because we're going to talk hard and heavy around our finances, what we can do. And of course, I'll let Lee Moore lead the conversation if you don't mind. Lee Moore, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Wow. So excited to be here today to have a really powerful conversation with both of you lady bosses. I know we've got a lot of amazing people in the audience listening, wanting to gain insights. So yeah, let's let's do it. Let's jump in today. And, and thank you so much for inviting me and having me on the show. Love it. So let's start with something that has always been a big beef of mine. And I actually think the reason why I love starting with this topic, and I think it's important is because I find that a lot of people in the health and wellness field, there's this guilt around money. And as women, we got to give that up because money is an extension of who we are. You know, if we are heart centered, we're going to do heart centered things. If we're greedy and selfish, well, guess what? It's going to be an extension of greedy and selfishness. I mean, finances are an extension of who we want to be and what we want to create. So Limor, I'd love to bring this taboo topic just to kick it off. Like what is the big taboo behind money and finances? And how did you start to unravel that? And how did you fall in love with the concepts and the industry of money? Because it wasn't a female dominated industry. It was a very masculine dominated industry. And we're seeing that change now. And that's why I'm really excited about having to connect with you. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's really interesting because if you meet a stranger, someone on the street, they're more likely to want to tell you about their sex life than they are to want to tell you about their financial situation. And I know you're having a giggle here listening to this, but it's actually the reality. And it, a big reason has to do with it's, it's something that's considered very private. There's a lot of judgmental. There's a lot of negative self-talk around it. And and money is something that really the majority of us have our first experience learning from our parents' paradigm. So if, you know, money was hard for your parents, if they told you they can't afford it, if they told you, you know, rich people are evil or greedy and money doesn't grow on trees, when those kinds of messages are ingrained from such an early age, unless somebody does some conscious programming or their parents had a very healthy relationship with money and were very abundant, it's something that's very difficult for people to talk about. And it's one of those topics where people generally tend to prefer to put their head in the sand and ignore it rather than really want to discuss it. But what's interesting is that once you kind of get beyond that initial barrier, once you're comfortable and you start asking questions and you're curious, it can actually flow very beautifully. And it has a lot to do, like you guys keep talking about from an energetic standpoint, but coupled with that, there's a lot of strategies that we don't just innately know how to invest. We don't just know we're not born and know how to save or how to allocate our dollars. And so there's really that sort of emotional connection to money, but coupled with it, there's got to be strategies that either you were fortunate enough to learn from your parents, or it's something that you strategically have to go and seek out and learn and watch videos and read books. I mean, fortunately for me, my parents were very abundant from a financial standpoint, and my dad was really into managing, tracking, investing. So I was introduced to it at a very early age. I started receiving allowance. I think I was six or seven years old. And right away, my, my dad explained to me, you know, what money could do, how I could save it, how it could actually get me the things that I wanted to do. And so I, I took pride every Sunday, you know, I'd wake up in the morning, I'd run over and be like, it's Sunday, I get my allowance today. And, you know, when my parents gave me $2 at first and $5 when I got a, a raise, um, I would always ask them to take me to the bank and I, I would get to talk to the teller and, you know, they would update my bank book and that was like my prized possession. So, you know, I had a really positive uh, introduction to money at a very early age and it, it just, it always made me really curious and I was always really fascinated by it. So, you know, it really brought me to no surprise, uh, graduated from business school, went to work in the banking industry and you're absolutely right. I worked as an employee for just over 12 years 
And, um, you know, now that I'm on the entrepreneurial side, I know we're going to get into this. It's really uh, exciting to have explored both sides of the coin. And, you know, when I was an employee, I actually really genuinely loved it. And, you know, I I liked what I did. I loved working in in the banking industry. I had these big dreams of, of growing up the corporate ladder and seeing how far I can take that. But, you know, as my my mindset was exposed to different sides of thinking, especially as real estate and investing took things to the mark where I could become an entrepreneur, my, my world was completely twisted and turned upside down. So long story short, money can be very difficult and complicated, but it's one of life's greatest enablers. And I'm, I'm honored to be here to talk about how we can start to make that shift. It is a big enabler, a very big enabler. And it can be a real indicator of where we are in life too. I mean, what's our own self-worth? right? How is that being magnified in other parts of our being, including our financial world? And I live that myself. I don't know, Cornelia, if you've gone through that, but I, that's my story was like survival, 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 just enough to make ends meet. And I got sick and tired of being in that space where I woke up one day and said, that's it. I am so done living this life. And it was that decision was that transformation where I felt a shift in me, which opened up the doors to make a shift internally, which allowed other external circumstances, things, and everything else to show up. So, Limor, how do people work with you? And what is your expertise now that you are a money expert? I know I approached you going, well, you know, now what? <laughs> well, now we have a little cash flow. What do I do? Like, we're not taught this in school. We're not taught any of this. And like you said, if the old program is there, the old imprinting's there, it keeps us stuck and stagnant. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's interesting because I think the hardest part and really the starting point for pretty much everybody is to take a good hard look at where you actually are. You know, what, what does your financial situation actually look like? How much debt do you have? If you have any debt, what's the interest rate? You know, how much are you, is your bucket leaking on an ongoing basis? You know, what, what income do you have coming in the door? You know, I, I often ask people and talking to large audiences, I'm like, you know, how many of you know down to the dollar how much money you earned last month? And I, I ask people to raise their hand and, you know, maybe 10% of the room raises their hand. On the flip side of the coin, it's the same thing when I ask people, you know, do you know how much money you spent? And that's probably even lower, less than 5% have an idea down to, you know, even the 5 or $10, how much they spent. And, and while I'm not a big proponent I'm, and I'm much more focused on financial freedom rather than I am like budgeting and cutting coupons, you have to start with where you are and be able to identify what's happening and let's in fact figure out where it is you're, you're hoping to go for because you know you take a look at a map. If you don't know where you are, you can't pinpoint where you want to go and, and figure out a path to be able to go there. So you asked a little bit about my focus, you know, these days, my primary focus is actually helping people get into real estate investments. And these are uh, advanced strategies. So we're not talking about buying a property and renting it out, which is, you know, the way most people talk about it or, or think about it. Uh, I like to think about that as almost like the rookie way, um, because when you buy a property and rent it out, and I'm not knocking anybody who has done that or is planning to do that because you've probably already heard 90% of the world's millionaires have real estate in their portfolio. But what I really want to get to is that if you buy a property and you rent it out, there are still so many challenges that you can run into. You could have bad tenants or they don't pay the rent, or even if you have the most amazing tenants, you know, what happens if you have major significant maintenance that you weren't expecting. On one of my properties, I had a washer dryer where the washer crashed last summer. The dryer was on top. I had to replace both. There goes your cash flow for a period of time. So there's lots of headaches associated with that. So predominantly, I help people get into real estate on a much smaller scale. So starting with as little as $50,000 through strategies where you are not the landlord. So they're hassle free, they get your money working harder for you. And you then have an opportunity to be able to start to accelerate your financial well being. So yeah, I definitely let people know that it's important to know where you are, how much money you're making, how much you're spending, and hopefully you're in a position where you're not spending more than you're making. But that's 
very easy to do, especially with credit cards. And then ultimately you want to start saving small amounts and get into the habit of investing. And once you're in a place where you can start to diversify with real estate, it can really take your portfolio to another level. I know. Any words, Canelia? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, the whole thing, you know, what do you think this behavior pattern is, Lamar, of when people in the room, when you're asking the question of uh, how much money are you making? How much money are you spending? You know, how you, you're like saying that it's just about the same percentage of people yeah. who don't know the answer to that question. And human behavior, we can't change something we don't acknowledge. So if we if we don't know what the, the behavior is, would you say that when people don't know how much money they're making, it's because, you know, how much money they're bringing in when they're not looking there, would you say that it's because they are, they are, you know, they, they are just wanting to be in denial or they're in denial about uh, what they're bringing in or they don't want to look at it for some reason. What, what, what is the behavior behind that? Money for a lot of people is really scary and really uncomfortable. And so they know they need to make more money, um, but they also want to live a certain lifestyle. And living that certain lifestyle, it, it costs money, which is why I always like to say that it's you know one of life's greatest enablers because it enables you to buy good quality food and groceries. It enables you to have a home with enough bedrooms for every single one of your kids. It enables you to go on that vacation that you really want to go on. So You know, I think a big part of it, unfortunately, is that credit cards has made it too easy for people to just instantly have what it is that they want without having gone through the process of putting money aside, setting a goal, taking baby steps, and actually feeling that sense of pride. And so as a result of that, it's like, hey, let's just swipe the plastic. You know, I can have what I want right now. But in the back of their minds, there's sort of this dread associated with it. Okay, so I know that wasn't a great financial decision, but I'm just not going to worry about it. I'll keep paying the minimum of my card, and I'll just kind of one day in the future deal with the fact that I actually spent more money than I had. So it's sort of this self-fulfilling, ongoing uh, negative cycle, unfortunately, uh, for people who haven't really taken charge of their finances and looked at, at where they are. But, you know, the good news is for people who have, who are listening or have this epiphany that's like, okay, you know what, I actually want to have a solid financial future. I typically find that that kind of wake up or aha moment happens, you know, at a certain life milestone. So maybe it's, I, I actually want to buy a house or I had a child and now I want to have my finances in order, or, you know, I've taken a look at, retirement is 15, 20 years away, and I don't have a single thing saved, if I can hardly get by with, you know, just a paycheck to paycheck now, if I don't make some changes, I'm not going to be able to do that in the future. Usually there's a milestone or something that sparks that thought so that, you know, Carnelia, as you mentioned, you know, how do people get there? They may not realize how they got there, but something can really help snap them out of it. Yes. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you. The wake up call. Yeah. You, you nailed it. That's what happened to me. It was the wake up call. Single mom staring at the ceiling, can't sleep at night going, what am I going to do? I had my personal pandemic five, six years ago when my relationship just wasn't where it was going, where I thought it would go. You know, nothing's a guarantee in life. We just don't know. So you're absolutely right. You nailed it, Limar. It's that moment where we're going, OMG, you know, this much time has come by. I'm a single mom now. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? I'm tired of being on this playing field. I want to elevate. I want an opportunity. I want to break free. And it's really about having that sense of peace. And, and I think right now there's a lot of people joining the call today that in the last two months, they've had their wake up call. Yeah. So maybe we can talk a little bit about what's happened in the last you know two months that have taught us um, some lessons about our finances, maybe about how it's important to have you know, create your you economy, the gig economy, having multiple sources of income. Like, I think that conversation needs to get more crisp now that a lot of people are having their own moments of aha. Absolutely. These last few months, Diane, for a lot of people have been 
such a meltdown of their reality or their perceived reality, you know, having a job thinking it's so secure, you know, my boss is good to me, my company is good to me. And then all of a sudden, something global happens that's completely out of their control. And we are seeing unemployment at absolutely unprecedented rates. I mean, certain industries, I mean, wiped out completely. You, you worked at a gym, you worked in a restaurant. I mean, those things are still not up and running and open. And so, you know, you really start to think about the fact that you were steady or secure because you had one strong stream of income. But the reality is if you only have one, that's not really steady and that's not really secure either. So, you know, I think people have been more open and receptive to different types of income. I've been talking about multiple streams of income for an extended period of time, many, many years. And the reality is we need to be able to not only diversify, but I think part of what's been happening and what's been become more and more obvious from an income generation perspective is that you have to be able to at least a small degree be able to control some of your income. So you can't be completely dependent on a boss or something else. I mean, the people who have really been able to thrive in the last few months, and I know quite a few businesses that have really taken off and grown, and I'm hoping we're going to talk a little bit about that afterwards, is those where you do have that element of control, where you can say, okay, you know what, doesn't matter the company that I work for, they shut the doors, but here I am in charge of my own financial destiny, in charge of my own financial income. I am going to be creative. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to evolve. I'm going to do things differently. I'm going to adapt. And I'm going to be able to continue to serve people, make a difference, and be able to impact my own bank account without that being somebody else's destiny, without my kind of waiting and hoping and praying that I still have the opportunity to generate income. So I think on the income generation, it's been huge. Inversely, I've also seen some really big difference of a lot of people commenting about how their spending behavior is changing. You know, they used to stop every day at Starbucks and buy a $7 coffee, you know, and they're, they're realizing, I actually don't need that. I was buying things online and new clothes and hold on a second, I actually don't need to spend that money. So, you know, kind of being uh, cooped up at home, if you will, or quarantined has really made people evaluate where their dollars are going. And people are also realizing like, hey, I can't bank on all of this money's like going to start again tomorrow. I'm not just going to turn on that income faucet. So if I need to be a little bit more like a squirrel, if I've got to preserve all of my little nuts and acorns, what was I spending on before that I actually don't need to spend? And people are really starting to think about their spending differently. Now, if those two aren't big enough of an impact, what I'd say is probably the largest one is what has happened to savings, to retirement plans. The stock market, as you ladies are probably both aware, took a dive of about 40%. And it's inching its way back up, but, you know, we are not there yet. And depending on the diversification of people's portfolios, if they're, you know, heavily into international or equities because they wanted to be a little bit more aggressive because their financial planner told them that's the way you're going to get ahead. you got to grow your money at double digits. They're now looking at their portfolios or they're afraid to look at their portfolios knowing that they are down so much. And, I can't tell you the number of phone calls that I've been on with people, you know, they're a couple of years away from retirement and their portfolios just completely dissipating. And now they're going to need a new life plan. They're going to go back to how do I generate more income? They're going to go back to how do I save more? And, you know, that's not a place anybody wants to find themselves accidentally. And if you're, you're not anywhere near retirement, you're still looking at your portfolio saying, if this can happen, out of nowhere, seemingly out of nowhere, how do I start to invest my money differently so that I do have control? How can I be backed by an asset? We're going to see more and more and more people, and I think it's a great thing, coming into the world of real estate where they actually have that tangible asset available to them in the background. So I would venture to say that these last three, four months, we have seen a bigger shift financially 
that maybe even we've seen from a health perspective. It's been it's been crazy. It's been, I think, hopefully amazing for people who take these lessons and run with them. But it's it's definitely been a massive change and a lot to handle financially all at once. Yeah, it's definitely been a wake up call for all of us, but waking us up to become more empowered, to be become more sovereign, to become our own ecosystem and have multiple streams in more ways than one so that you're not relying and depending upon one stream, one source of income, and that then that's going to change your entire world, but that you really are, you know, supported 360 with different uh, streams. I don't know what, what is it that millionaires, all the millionaires, all the billionaires don't just have one stream. They all have multiple streams of income. So I think many of us right now, we are moving into the entrepreneur generation, especially now with so many businesses that are not going to reopen, you know, just like here, even in my town where I live in La Conner, it's a very small town, but there's many of the stores that are not going to be reopening now. And there's many stores that are that are closing. We're going more online. And so, it, you know, so many things are changing. And like you said, Lamar, we won't even really know what the effects of everything is, you know, in it's, it's going to take a while for us to really see what all of the effects have been, uh, what we've been undergoing these last four months when our entire world changed for good. So uh, ladies, let's take a break. We did, we skipped the first break. Let's take a break now. And when we come back, Diane is going to lead us into a deeper questionnaire of direct sales and what we can do to, um, upscale our marketing and also investing, right? So let's take a break and we'll be right back. Have you ever wondered how you might feel differently if the books were full of her instead of him? What if your history lesson was filled with powerful women leaders and rulers? As a woman, would you feel more empowered? As a man, would you see women differently? I'm Megan Edge. I'd love for you to join me on my radio show, Playing on the Edge, Radical Change with Ease, with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. I hope to see you there. Hey, how's it going? If it's stressful or just plain exhausting, New Light Living is here to ask, is this the way you want to live? Join me, your intuitive spiritual life coach and host, Orika Sullivan, every week on New Light Living. Discover the power of creative tools to start living every day as your ideal dream day. See your life in the new light. To learn more, visit newlightliving.com. Have you ever wondered what your pets think about do you know what your pets are saying to you? Dr. Monica will be your pet's translator to help you understand what your pets are trying to communicate to you. Enhance the bond with your furry friends on Pets Talk with Pet Communicator Dr. Monica each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about Dr. Monica, visit PetCommunicator.com. Are you done being afraid to jump into the life that's waiting for you? Are you ready for a real shift? I invite you to tune in every Tuesday with me, Tracy L, on the Tracy L. Clark Show, where we will teach you how to live your extraordinary life. At 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where I will provide the tools and the steps needed to help you transcend perceived limitations and move forward with an extraordinary life. For more information, visit me at TracyLClark.com. Do you need a makeover on your finances? Do you have more month at the end of your money? Do you wonder where all your money goes? Donette Palmore has been helping people since 2015 gain control of money so they can live out their purpose. If you need help or know someone that does, go to ProverbsFinancialCoaching.com to book your free 30-minute consultation. Are you ready to shift your current beliefs about death from debilitating pain and loss? Follow Angie Corbett Kuiper as she shares that through choice, present moment awareness, and keeping an open mind. Anything is possible, even in death. 
Tune in to Beyond Proof Radio with Angie, redefining death and loss every first Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more, visit BeyondProof.com. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. We hear that many of you are commenting on the Transformation Talk Radio live Facebook page. Thank you so much for sharing your comments and for your sharing your voice. Feel free to continue on sharing your ideas. And, and if you have any questions, let us know. And let us continue on diving into this deep conversation with these two beautiful ladies today. Awesome, Cornelia. So, you know, this is where I love to have this conversation with Leomar because I light up like a Christmas tree. Many of you on the call may not know me, you know, five years ago, like I said in the intro, my life, I had my own personal pandemic, I'd say about six years ago now, where I woke up one day and my life took a turn. I became a single parent. I remember staring at the ceiling going, what am I going to do? I have no time. I have no bandwidth to go and back to school or all the traditional stuff we're taught to do. But my biggest challenge was I had no capital. I had no capital to sit down with a person like Lee Moore with that kind of mindset going, here's my 50,000. What can I do with this? I didn't have that. And that's why I felt so frustrated. I felt handcuffed for these standard ways of investing and ways of making money. And, you know, it wasn't until my mentor actually introduced me to the direct selling model. And the sad thing is, is that it was a liberation for me, but the sad thing is it's got a stigma to it. And when I started to actually prove that the industry worked, that it was working for me, I was okay working. I just wasn't okay wasting my time. And all I was looking for was a vehicle that would allow me to have financial stability because all I was looking for at that time was stability that would allow me potential freedom and didn't have a ceiling on how much I could earn and be able to actually create, um, you know, duplication and something called um, residual income and and growing through exponential growth. And that's when I met Lee Moore at, you know, an event and she understood the model. She understood it. She got the science behind it. She understood the finances behind it. And I would love her input and her expertise on, you know, how someone like Lee Moore, who's established, who has real estate, who has multiple businesses, who coaches on money, also has dabbled into the direct sales model as well. So, Lima, if you're cool sharing that with us today, and many listeners on this call can probably relate to my story. I don't have money. I don't have capital. I can't pay my bills. What are my options? Absolutely. I'm really glad that we're having this conversation today because the direct selling model, exactly like you said, Diane, it just has a really negative stigma about it that doesn't usually allow people to sort of pull back the curtain and give them enough of a chance to be able to say, okay, what, what is this business? What is this model? And I'm going to just backtrack a little bit because, um, you know, before the break, we had a chance to chat a little bit about my working in the corporate world, which I loved while I was there, but it left me working 24 hours a day. I could hardly keep up with all of the emails I would get from my boss at night. At the end of the year, every single year was this very stressful discussion. Did I make a good year-end bonus? Did I deserve a 2% raise? And really, from an income perspective, as an employee, you really start to feel the crunch of that ceiling. It's there. I can't go any further. I don't have any more hours in the day. And you're in a position when you're an employee that you're being taxed at the highest rates, right? So, you know, it's easy once you pass that six figure mark to be able to be in a position where unfortunately the automatic default is 50% of every dollar that you're earning automatically goes to taxes in the government. So there are a lot of advantages of being an employee uh, sorry, an employee first, and then moving into entrepreneurship, taking the skills that you learn. But in entrepreneurship, you are not accountable to a boss. You have no income ceiling. You have so many more tax advantages. You have flexibility. You can do what you want, where you want, once you get your business up and running. So I think that that's something that is 
very, very desirable. And for me, when I left the corporate job, I had already built a real estate portfolio that was funding my life, but I wanted to pay it forward and share with people about how money works, what we can do. And as part of that journey is where I've discovered and learned about the direct selling model. And I have to say it's something that is very strong and very impressive. Think about this. So you've been throughout the COVID situation, you've been impacted financially, or maybe you're just not impacted negatively, but you want to have more money. You want to have more ability to do something for your kids. You want to buy something. You want a better experience. You want a bigger house. Trust me, everybody wants at least one thing, if not a whole boatload of that. And the only way to be able to do that if you're an employee is to turn on the faucet on another stream of income. And if you're going to say to yourself, okay, great, I want to make more money. Coming up with the business idea can be very challenging. You need to be the accounting department, the legal department, the sales, the marketing, and everything that comes with it. And it can be a real big struggle. I mean, it's no surprise that, you know, 90% of businesses plus actually even fail. And so for people who are open to the idea that maybe, maybe there is a business out there and they've already done the accounting, the legal, the product, the distribution, but instead of them spending a lot of money on billboards and commercials and marketing, what they're willing to do is hand you a business in a box. And what they're gonna do is that marketing budget, call it maybe 40% of their business, they're willing to pay that to you for the work that you do for selling, for sharing, for promoting their products. You now don't have all the headaches associated with a traditional business. Now, the, the catch is you have to be willing to do the work. So it can't be like, open the door. I mean, imagine that you've got a flower shop and all of a sudden you put an open sign up on the window and crickets. That doesn't necessarily mean that your business is up and running, that revenue is flowing, that there's extra cash flow every month. So we have to realize that it is a business. And even if you're gonna do, let's say a franchise, you wanna buy a Tim Hortons or a McDonald's or a Subway, you're investing probably on the low end about a quarter million dollars just to be able to have the right to have that brick and mortar open the door. And what's been really interesting is to see how many franchises are actually closing their doors right now, Yeah. right? And so, for anybody who's looking to be able to generate some more income, they don't have all of that built up equity and capital. Starting a direct selling business, usually the startup is nominal, you know, a couple hundred or a couple thousand, depending on the different organizations, but it creates an opportunity for anybody to instantly be in business for themselves, instantly have a ceiling that has been removed, no matter how hard you're willing to work, that's how far you could go in. And that is actually something that's very different to an employee mindset. It's like, oh my gosh, where did this stability go? But then you get to a situation like what's happened in the last few months and stability is out the window anyway. So you might as well embark on a business or a journey where you are rewarded for how much you put in. If you put in a lot of work and a lot of effort, you can make a lot of money. Now, here's what's really cool about this business is that Probably one of the greatest reasons where myself as a real estate investor, I was like, hold on, this is cool. This is why after having multiple six figure businesses with my husband and I, we said, we have to be in the direct selling space. And that is, it creates a residual, meaning that every single month you're in and you're out, there's an opportunity for money to continue to be made and earned by virtue of the fact that you are building a team. And, you know, as a real estate investor, when I got to talk to new people, the number one question I always ask them and the number one answer I always get is, you know, what's your goal? What are you trying to get to? Without fail, the most standard answer that I get is $10,000 a month. I need to have $10,000 a month. And if we work backwards and identify how much money they need to have to buy the real estate to be able to generate that $10,000 a month, it is absolutely absurd. And most people aren't anywhere near having that amount of capital. But in the world of direct selling, where 
a little bit of effort is duplicated and goes over and over and over again, we have an opportunity to within whatever period of time is reasonable for you based on how much effort you're willing to put in, you can turn on that faucet. And that's literally what it is. You can turn it on and keep twisting, keep working until enough water or money is flowing from it that you have enough for your lifestyle. So uh, I'm going to pause right here because I can just keep going, but I, I want to I want to get your your reaction and and your questions and make sure we take this in the direction that that you ladies were hoping to take. Here. That model changed my life, and I think the important thing that people need to know when they're shopping or if they're open to a direct sales model company is the products. Our products that people want consistently every month. Our products really things you can stand behind because I think no matter what you do, you have to be congruent. No matter what you do, you have to be of integrity because if you're not behind the product, you have to absolutely love and know that the masses are going to love it too because it's the reorders that creates the residual. And, you know, that's where, you know, I had that conversation with you, Limor, where I'm like, hey, I'm finally getting out of debt. I'm actually in this place where I can actually start creating something for myself again. And, you know, this is where I sat with Limor and I said, you know, what, what's my next step? What do I do? I don't want to make the same mistake that I did in my 20s. Just putting it in the bank, <laughs> spending a little more, you know, a little more clothes, a little more shopping. No, I don't want to repeat those mistakes again. I want to be more wise. I want to be able to have scalability. Now, I, um, I'm grateful for the model. I'm grateful for this conversation because a lot of people think there's a bad stigma behind it. You know, I love the interview Larry King did with Eric Worre. He's one of the top trainers in the world for this direct sales model, irrelevant of the company. He's just a third-party independent expert. Candid mm -hmm. conversation on YouTube. I invite everyone here, if you've got to get more information, get information. Understand what you're saying no to because misinformation is practically stealing what's possible from you based on a opinion, an assumption, um, a, maybe a previous bad experience, but I think misinformation is where we miss the boat so many, many times. And uh, I don't know, Cornelia, you know, you and I chatted earlier on the call. We're excited because not only do you impact your world and once you step out of survival, you get to help other people around the world scale their lives as well. And that's what excites me now is when you step out of survival, when you can start paying your bills, you can start buying your groceries, you can start paying off your credit card debt, you can really say, hey, who else can identify with this emotional handcuff? Who else around the world can we help generate an extra $100, $200, $300 in third world countries where you change generations, you empower women and children to get out of circumstances that most of us in these countries can't even fathom? And that's where I just feel really grateful that when you're given a gift, you got to do something with it. And I know Cornelia and I, we've been working very hard with um, Liberia. We have a gentleman there that's, you know, been able to start scaling the business. It became official. And that's what excites me is the impact you have. So you step out of the whole survival piece, you go into impacting other lives, you know, and, and I think if you can maybe talk about the financial reward of network marketing and other investments and other income stream, Maybe, you know, just to give a little more clarity on how the rewards compare to other areas. And it's, good. it's always good to have multiple, right? Always oh, good to have Don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's the final. If you take anything today, <laughs> be open, get information, connect with Limor, but don't put your eggs in one basket. What would you say about that, Limor? Yeah, before you go into that, I just want to say, uh, let's tell the audience right now how to get in contact with you, Limor. I just also want to say that I love how you... Uh, broke down the model of uh, direct sales and how you talked about the faucet and how, you know, you articulated the message of the effort that you put into it, that really you're the driver and that all the marketing and everything is done for you and that basically it's up to you and that if you find something, a, a, a company that is reputable that you want to represent, that you can really take it far and then use that money for real estate investing. Did I hear you say that right? Oh, you did. And and thank you for, for mentioning that, Cornelia. And Diane, I will get back to your to your question in just a moment. You know, I almost like to think of like your financial well-being in a, the most simplistic way is almost like a figure eight turn sideways, so an infinity side. So we gotta work really, really hard. We gotta generate income so that we can funnel that income 
into our investments so that our investments can continue to grow for us until we have enough income to be able to be living off our investments. So it's kind of this cyclical, if you're sort of seeing the visual here, where you're, you're earning and you want to earn as much as you can, as fast as you can, but not so that you can spend it and buy the latest, hottest clothes and outfits, even though, you know, do a little bit of that. We want to take that money and funnel it into the investment side so that it can work for us there strategically, passively, very securely with real estate as a backing. We want to generate double digit returns there so that when we're ready, when we want to, when we choose to, if it's for a week, a month, or a longer period of time, we can actually take our foot off the gas. Maybe there's something happening in your life. Maybe you, you want to do some traveling, right? It shouldn't only be about work, 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 hit 65, not have enough money or fall off a cliff, right? So yes, absolutely. One of the things that I, I love about this opportunity is that a little bit of effort, a medium amount of effort, a high degree of effort can actually really increase the amount of income that you're generating from a direct selling business. And then, you know, my advice and what I recommend is imagine we take that increased income, you don't need it all to live off. And then we start building your second piece of the funnel. So the two really fit together so that, you know, if you want to retire when you're 40 or 50 or 55, or, you know, at 65, you're done working and you want to leave the most beautiful legacy for your family, for the world at large, you have the opportunity to do that. So Cornelia, thank you for articulating and connecting those dots because they two really go together. And it's one of the reasons why I am so excited about the direct selling business. And actually my husband and I, when we had an honest conversation um, about this business. We've got, like I mentioned, already multiple other businesses, but we looked at direct selling and we said, this is the business that if we are committed to working, you know, slight time, a little bit less than part-time, we can over a five-year duration, perhaps turn on an income stream that's 10, 20, 30, 50 plus thousand dollars a month. And we didn't have any other stream of income that has the ability to grow residually that same way. If we wanted to grow our, you know, cash flow from properties, well, we'd have to continually invest more and more in terms of the number of properties that we have or the number of properties that we control. Whereas if we're willing to work on this network marketing or direct selling industry, the actual size of the paycheck every month is going to continue to grow, which is why, you know, we made a commitment to ourselves and each other to say, listen, if we're really going to give this a shot, if we truly believe in this model, we are in for five years, no matter what, mm -hmm. there's no quitting. There's no giving up. There's no saying it's not working because innately the way this model works is that over time, your paycheck and your residual gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that is unlike any other type of income basically out there. And so while we can have real estate and we've got franchises and cryptocurrency and, you know, all kinds of other things, there's no other income stream out there that with a little bit of time consistently, that income stream is going to grow. It's the opposite of trading your time for money. So now you go to your job and you know, you're there and you're present, you do a good job and you get your paycheck and then you never get paid again for those hours that you work. It was a one for one. You put in those hours, and even then it's many more hours sometimes than you expect. And then you get that paycheck, but direct selling is the exact opposite. So Diane, you, you made a great point about how does this compare to other types of, of income streams? And you know, I'll invite you guys to, to consider, let's say you have $100,000. Okay? You worked really hard in your job. In order to have $100,000 in savings, you probably had to earn $200,000. Half of that went to the government. So I'm just saying it's out there. We live in the best country in the world and, you know, taxes help our economy run, but it's not the most tax efficient for us. Rant over. So you've got that $100,000 that you worked really hard for. And then you go and you invest it and financial planners will tell you, you know, you should aim for 5% a year, 
Okay. And, and maybe that 5% that you collect is actually, you know, 8% plus all those hidden fees that we don't really talk about too often and in Canada are not even required to be disclosed, but they're out there. So let's say you're making 5% return. Okay. You worked really hard. You saved a hundred thousand, you're making 5% return. Hopefully it wasn't in the stock market when COVID hit and it dropped 40%, but you're only making 400 and like 16 or $420 a month. And you're like, what? I worked so hard in my job. I paid taxes. I saved up $100,000. I invest that. And that works out to be $420 odd a month. Well, what if you were willing to put in a bit of sweat equity? What if you're willing to roll up your sleeves and just say, you know what? I'm going to put in a little bit of effort. I'm going to start a direct selling business. Yeah, the toughest part is actually going to be explaining to other people that it's a legitimate business. And seriously, that's going to be the hardest job. But if you're listening to the right mentors, you know, we've got people like Diane in our corner and, and the experts like Richard Bliss Brooks and, and Eric Worry, which you mentioned, Diane, they can help us to dispel those myths. And it doesn't take a lot of work in the direct selling world in order to be able to generate that 400 and twenty dollars. So you know it's it's quick and easy for people to dispel this model and say, oh no no no, it's it's silly. There's a pyramid. It's a scheme. You know I can't believe you're in direct marketing. But if you're willing to get beyond that, really magical things can happen, and it can allow you. You know if you don't have that existing capital to get your foot in the game. You know it is an absolute equalizer. Diane and I had a conversation the other day about. You know how women's today still only make 82 cents on the dollar of a job that a man does and kind of crazy to believe that that still is out there but direct selling is as even as it gets you mm -hmm. know and whoever you are and whatever skills you have you know if you if english isn't your first language or if you're young or if you're a little bit older you know you've still got a community of people around you that you've built amazing relationships with and if you've got a phenomenal product that you love and I love that Diane said it's got to be residual. So, you know, I'm a big fan as I was analyzing the industry, you know, I was like, okay, part of how this is actually going to work is if there's people who are loving a product and using it over and over again. So, you know, if it's something that I don't need to buy every month, it might be amazing. But like, once I got one, I got one. It's not going to work as well as if you have a consumable or something that people need on an ongoing basis. And then I'm going to take that one step further and say it's ideal if the product that you select is something that people are already using today. So if you have to teach them, you know, if your product is, you know, stand on one foot and jump up and down and drink this thing and three, whatever, if you've got to teach somebody what to do or how to do it, it's not going to be as easy for them. So, you the know, more more you could you are just dynamic you could just go on and go on what i want to do is we have two minutes okay got gotcha. the show so what i want to do is i want to get your i want to get people your info i want to be able to send them to where 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 they can get in contact with you via social media and also let's tell the audience the direct marketing that we're all involved in and and how to how to get in contact with that information as well so go ahead lamar yeah, perfect. So the best way to get in touch with me um, is one of two ways. Either jump on over to my website, which is lemore.money. Uh, there's a contact page there. You can pop me an email. Uh, the best way to send me a note. Or otherwise, I love Facebook. So jump on over with a name like Lemore, L-I-M-O-R, last name Markman, M-A-R-K-M-A-N. I'm very easy to find on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny how the time is just zipped by, but, you know, we could probably talk for hours and I, and I love to about not only the direct uh, marketing business opportunity, but also finances in general, because it should be about enabling you to live the financial life and the life that you want to live and finances are going to are going to enable you to be able to do that. So uh, I look forward to connecting with with hopefully many of you. Uh, to answer your questions and see how I can greater support you. Wonderful. Thank you, everybody. Diane Solano, as always, love you. Thank you, beloved audience. We'll see you again next time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lamar. Bye. Bye-bye.
You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Lady Boss, Women Inspiring Women, featuring leading edge entrepreneurs who are putting the focus on empathic leadership in today's modern day world. Text the word Cornelia to the number 22828 and receive her weekly newsletters. For more information on Cornelia Stephanie and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to CorneliaStephanie.com. Views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of the station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.